a couple of years ago, Hunter Kane released a fantastic song called Long Way From Lonely. And as a big fan of that song, I was hoping she'd release some new music soon. And I was delighted to see that Mind Of Its Own, her new single, was about to come out. In fact, it has now come out. Hunter, lovely to talk Hi. to you. Hi, Sophie. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Uh, and I'm apologising in advance uh, to anyone watching in case there is noise. There's someone draining water next to me out of a garden <laughs> bed and I can't control it. So um, that's fine. Hear- that's fine. It's all good. That's right. <laughs> no, I thought I'd start because I haven't interviewed you before. I thought I'd go way back to the beginning to your childhood because you grew up sure. in a very musical household. Both your parents are musicians. So I was wondering if you yes. ever thought music wasn't cool because your parents did it. Never, <laughs> absolutely never. Um, it's in the genes, you know, it's in the blood. Um, I recall my earliest memories were musical and um, I was a kid that was just forever dancing around an entertainer. Um, as you said, very musical household. Dad was a brilliant guitarist, a great singer. Mum played piano, she sang as well. Right. Um, and dad got to play with some of the big guns back in the day, John Farnham, um, Johnny O'Keefe, Little River Band, the ABC Show Band. Uh, he was the front man for the Powerhouse Band. Um, so he was just a real musical whiz and really was my musical muse and still is. Yeah. They are, that is a lot of Powerhouse 3 to, to have. <laughs> um, and so was your mother a classical pianist? No, she wasn't. She wasn't. Um, Mum, mum likes to dabble in a lot of instrumentation, but predominantly she loved the piano and the keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, she also plays piano accordion. My mother is Austrian, so from the home country, yeah. But you really like that's that is like a full, full rounded, full spectrum musical childhood, basically. <laughs> very, very full, and a lot of older siblings that were all into something different musically so many different genres in the household and music was always played super super loud so I was really in my element (laughs) so did you as a kid but also I suppose the other part of that is that's a lot of different people with musical influences of their own and things they like to listen to did you find it difficult to find the sort of music you really liked uh I, I really got into it all um uniquely at age eight my brother used to listen to a lot of Pink Floyd and I think I became the biggest Pink Floyd fan at eight years of age which is pretty strange (laughs) for a little girl (laughs) yeah absolutely um but so I was raised in Melbourne and we moved to regional Victoria when I was about 11 or 12 Mm -hmm. and that's when I was really immersed in the culture of country and country music so I started getting into country from that point on and I participated in a whole bunch of uh, talent quests around regional Victoria and um, I really loved country from that point onwards. But I did actually go on a bit of a crazy journey musically um, throughout my life. You know, from there I, I went on to a blues band. I've been in a really big uh, soul band, 12 piece. Um, I did my own uh, country rock thing for a while. Yeah. I studied at RMIT and did sound production and um, it was a few, like it was quite a few years back now though, um, I heard the Get Closer album by Keith Urban and Kerry was really amazing at the time too with Some Hearts and that was it for me. I was like something's missing in my life and I feel like it's country music so I've, I've positioned myself there since then. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, look, I had questions about the bands you're in, Hunter, and you just answered them all for me, but no. I will ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you said, you're in a 12-piece band with a soul band, and there's a, a technically you have to learn a lot of things in order to front a band with that many pieces in. You don't have, you you know, do. have to learn a microphone technique and how to sing around those instruments. Um, and then, you know, country rock, that's, that's different again. That's putting a lot more volume behind it. I'm wondering if there are things you learnt playing in bands in those different genres that have informed the singer you are today? Great question. Um, undoubtedly, I think, you know, it, 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 um, it's got to sink in there somewhere, right? You know, and, and it becomes a part of the process naturally. Um, and, and two, in a soul band, you've also got a lot of uh, dancing going on. It's very rhythmic. You know, you've got that brass section. So that definitely got under my skin. And I think that that comes out in live performance as well. Now, there's a guitar over your shoulder. So, as you said, you went in talent for singing, <laughs> but when did you start playing guitar? Uh, when I was little, uh, dad used to teach me. Okay. If I'm completely honest, I think, you know, like as a child, I was really into dancing and theatre. Um, so, 
I did a lot of ballet, tap and jazz, um, but I would pick up the guitar and I think my dad really wanted me to go far with it, but I didn't. Um, but over the last couple of years, I've been picking it up a lot more and, you know, writing songs with the guitar. I do really enjoy rhythm playing, but um, I seriously couldn't tell you that I'm a wonderful guitarist or anything like that. But in time, in time, I think my thing is singing. So, right. you know, I, I put a lot of emphasis on great vocals. Well, and also I think when you are a singer playing guitar, you know, the guitar is there to support you singing, um, to Definitely. look at it that way. So it's not yeah. like, oh, I need to be the lead guitarist here because someone no, else No, certainly, <laughs> certainly not looking to do that anytime soon. <laughs> and you also mentioned that uh, you studied music production and, and um, sound engineering at RMIT and uh, you did produce your first single. But I'm wondering yes. if you went into those studies with a view to just learning more about the technical side of recording music or did you actually intend to become a producer? If I'm completely honest, I think I was, um, I was really partial. I, I wanted to learn about the craft. Mm -hmm. um, but at that age, I think I was also kind of avoiding what I really wanted to do. Right. And I think a lot of people do that when they're so passionate about something, there's a risk about putting it all on the line. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, I, at that age, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to RMIT and I'm going to study sound. Um, and that was a great thing to learn. And um, I've used it for sure. But I, if I could go back, I'd probably say to my younger self, just go for it. You know, you want to be a singer. You want to, you know, you want to write songs. You want to perform. Yeah. yeah. Given your background through your childhood and the talent quests and the musical household, it's interesting that you did feel that reticence to um, to launch yourself as a performer. I think it's natural when you're a young person to feel that. But um, I'm just intrigued that, that, that you, with all that experience, still felt it. I think it shows that it doesn't matter how much experience you have, you can always feel nervous. I've got a lot of stories about being overly nervous and I still get nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's the thing about not letting it completely overtake you. As a teenager, I remember doing a grand final in country music and I was just shaken to the core. You know, I was terrified. And I found myself going, why do I do this? You know, yeah. like I, I really want to do it, but when I get to the point of doing it, I'm terrified. So it's definitely a learning process and speaking to other artists and performers about how they navigate that. My dad never, ever got perform, uh, performance anxiety, ever. Wow, okay. You know, I had so much envy. <laughs> he was just such an eccentric person. Um, some people it doesn't affect, some people it does. But I find um, what works for me is when I feel the nerves coming on, it's like rechannel. You've got to mm -hmm. rechannel it somewhere positive. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to like put on the headphones and play something really, really loud, you know, right. before I go on stage and just physically get in the zone. Yeah. I think that really, really helps. And circling back to the country music part of your life, I was reading that um, the, one of your early country music, uh, well, Awakenings was Becky Cole. and um, oh, I love her. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I've got to say, she was my introduction to Australian country music, the song Lazy Bones in particular. And that was mm -hmm. that's when I started to think, oh, there might be in this, something in this country music. I'm wondering if you have a favourite Becky Cole song. Oh, my goodness. There's too many. And, like... <laughs> People ask me these questions all the time and when I get put on the spot, it's like, oh, my goodness. I know, uh, and it's not a fair question because if you love an art, like I shouldn't actually ask that because if you love an artist, you love oh, so many. You love songs. so many, absolutely. I, I got asked recently what was my top five songs and I just, I couldn't give any, <laughs> I couldn't give any answers whatsoever. Um, but Becky's just, she glows, you know. She's so charismatic. There's nobody like Becky Cole, honestly. She's just beautiful. She's a national treasure. And I know you were on Saturday Night Country with her recently, so that must have been great. Uh, I didn't actually get to do a chat with her. I'm hoping oh. to do so. But she spun the song, which was amazing. And it was a day after release, so I'm so appreciative. But still, there you go. Like, there's the connection uh, that all those years ago you were. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably um, get really, really nervous in that chat if that happens. <laughs> I'm sure she will put you at her at your ease because um, she is she is as you said charismatic and wonderful. Um, now, at one stage, you travelled to Nashville where you met oh. up with Phil Barton, um, and yes. he's instrumental in your, he was instrumental in your first single, "Long Way from Lonely," because he gave you the demo for it. Were there other developments that came out of that trip that you found are still at work today? <laughs> Very much so. The the desire to go back <laughs> it certainly <laughs> it certainly ignited a passion for Nashville. 
the place is just it's mecca you know for country music and um you know I was super naive about Nashville I had this idea in my head years ago that you know Nashville was small and dusty and hot and just full of cowboys and people walking along with straw in their mouth or something chewing on some straw but you know the the 2018 trip to Nashville was a real eye-opener and so exciting arriving there everything is just lush it's a big city it's happening like I said it's mecca it's just got all these creatives just flocking to it there's so much atmosphere and I got to meet some really great songwriters, including Mr. Phil Barton, who's just a total gun. A lovely guy, lovely guy. So when you arrive there as an Australian, because there are other Australians there, do you get to hook into a network straight away or is it, are there just so many there now that, like, where do you start? <laughs> well, I actually didn't meet a terrible amount of Australians when I was there, to be honest. They were predominantly Nashville folk. Right. Um, and, and I travelled down to Memphis and Mississippi as well whilst I was there. Um, but, yeah, Phil actually handed me a long way from Lonely um, just prior to getting onto the plane. And, you know, I recall listening to that song, I think maybe like 50 times on the way back home. Right. And the whole time I was listening to it, I kept on getting Shane Nicholson's voice popping in my head. And the song wasn't actually structured to be a duet. I thought, this is interesting. Why is this happening? And um, I couldn't shake it and uh, got home and I thought, well, I don't actually know Shane Nicholson, so what am I going to do about that? There's, there's a little hurdle there. Um, and also it was like taking two or three months to summon up the courage to kind of cold call, if you will, like reach out on Facebook and go, hi, Shane, I'm Hunter Kane and I've got this really amazing song and I think you'd be perfect on it. Um, and I mean, you know, at the end of the day, after three months of pondering whether I should do it, I ultimately got to the point where I was like, oh, well, what can he say? Yes or no. So yeah. made contact, uh, shot him an email with the track and he came back to me. And he said, oh, my goodness, I love this song. I'd really love to do it. So we went from there. <laughs> Which is fantastic because I think so often we do stop ourselves asking for things we want. Um, and so the true. worst thing that can happen usually is no. I mean, and, and when, when right. you think about it, it's like, well, that's actually not terrible. If someone says no, they say no, that's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's just so wonderful that you had that idea. You, you held to your vision. You didn't stop yourself and think, oh, no, maybe someone else can sing it or maybe I don't need another person on it. You actually went, went for it. So has that emboldened you to go for other things? <laughs> it's straight to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah. feel like I really feel like that move was straight to the top. I mean, you know, Shane is just so impressive. And, you know, everything he touches turns to gold. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the other thing I really found out about Shane was, you know, he's not just, he's not just such a well-rounded musician and producer. He's a really nice person as well. You know, I got to spend time with him on the video shoot and, um, you know, he's a great mentor and he spent time with me and um, guided me in the right direction. You know, unfortunately, COVID happened kind of pretty much at the same time and mm -hmm. I lost a bit of momentum, but I've certainly learned, learned a hell of a lot from him. And you, as I, said, I mentioned earlier, you produced that song, and of course he's a producer as well. So that's an interesting pairing as two of you both <laughs> no, who are <laughs> producers. But I noticed that for your new single, uh, "Mind of Its Own," you didn't produce it, or you didn't produce no, it on I your own. You worked with Adrian Hannon. So what made you decide to go to someone else? Uh, actually, Adrian Hannon was highly recommended to me by Brooke Chevelle. Oh, okay. um, so Brooke's worked with Adrian before, and um, I. I originally wanted to co-produce this track with Adrian, but what's so awesome about this gentleman is that, like, after meeting with a couple, meeting with him a couple of times, um, I had a real sense of security and safety in his knowledge, in his professionalism. Um, he's just a—he really is a total gun, you know. I've said it before that I think you'd be hard pressed to kind of put any more music in that man. Yeah, I think he'd just pop, you know. Like, it's really quite extraordinary. He's an amazing tracking engineer, mix engineer, mastering engineer, amazing producer. And the way he goes about these sessions, everything's, the energy remains high, you know, mm -hmm. and you always do feel safe. Mm -hmm. You feel safe to make errors, which is, you know, I think key for an artist. Mm -hmm. we're, we're sensitive folk. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I, you know, like, I just felt like I didn't need to jump on board producing and it was 
it was kind of a nice thing. It was like, this is something different that I feel so secure in this situation and I can just focus on doing my vocals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting because it sounds like you therefore didn't even have a niggle of thinking, oh, I could do this differently. You just completely surrendered to the process. I did surrender. I mean, of course, like, when, when the sessions first started, you get a little nervous, you know, like I did have the faith, but it was, you know, obviously it was time, it was, it was being tested, you know, it was in the works. So you do get a little nervous about it. And he would go down roads that I'd be sitting there thinking, you know, a couple of times throughout the sessions, where's this going, you know? But I also did have that belief in him. And I was like, okay, Hunter, this is good for you. You know, just, just you know, you might learn something from this. And he, he didn't make a bad move. He really didn't. It all just came together so brilliantly. And I love the way the sonic value is so huge in the song. Like the production is amazing. And the yeah, song yeah. just keeps building and building and building. And you don't find that a lot these days. And it's really all down to him. Have you found that having that technical knowledge, which not a lot of artists have, because and especially studying it the way you have, that it has influenced the way you sing, that you sort of got half a mind on how the track's going to lay down and you developed your voice accordingly or do you, do you just let it come out the way it is? I went into my sessions on this last song with an idea and a lot of it stuck and there was parts of it that didn't, you know, and again, it was, you know, that mentoring from Adrian. He's, he's great at tracking vocals. That, that gentleman's worked with the likes of Delta Goodrum, Vanessa Amorosi. Um, so he got, he got great vocals out of me and we went to places that I wouldn't have thought of going. Right. <laughs> which is always interesting. But I think also as an artist, um, again, that notion of surrendering, you have to be willing to go there. Like it's, it's you've got to open yourself up to that. And that can be quite scary, actually, to, to Most definitely. think without a net, you know. <laughs> Most definitely. And also too, you know, you, you're also, when you respect someone musically, as I do for, you know, the respect I have for Adrian, you also want to do a really great job. You want to do a great job for yourself and your audience and, and, and your momentum and moving forward. But you also want to, you know, compliment the work, you know, the the the, the foundation that they've laid for you. Mm -hmm. um, but there was no dramas with that. He just made it. He made it amazing. So I'm really looking forward to working on other songs with him in the future. Well, hopefully they won't be over Zoom because, from what I understand, when you started <laughs> the process, you were in lockdown because you live in Victoria, and uh, so you yep. just couldn't be in the same place. So that was that a disconcerting experience, or did you just trust the process once you knew you could trust him? Uh, it was very, very bizarre. <laughs> it was really, really bizarre to do it that way. Obviously, I had never done it like that before, and mm -hmm. I'm so accustomed to being in the studio for every part of the process. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a bit bizarre. Um, <laughs> um, there's a lot of there was a, a lot of my canary actually on on some of the recordings initially. <laughs> yes, we should mention you have a canary. <laughs> <laughs> um so you don't usually find that in the studio environment but we picked that up pretty quickly um but um you know we made it through and as soon as the lockdown was over it was the last lockdown I was able to go to the song store and, and track my vocals which must have been a huge relief it was <laughs> yeah. and the, song, the, <laughs> yeah. the song um mind of its own is about not being able to end a relationship because the other person is irresistible um and even though the relationship's not necessarily great uh, the heart has, has a mind of its own in that yeah. respect. I'm wondering if you've found yourself in that situation, not necessarily romantically, but when you've been involved in something, could be work, could be a place where mm -hmm. you think this is not great for me, but um, I'm I'm feeling powerless to get out of it. Oh yeah, so many times, so many times. This is, yeah, that the song is super relatable and real. I think in that sense, and. Um, you know, I can I can definitely speak for the the first part of the question. You know, in being in relationships that have failed, and uh, it's it's a really difficult process to go through. You know, it it's two opposing forces. You know, you've got your mind knowing the result and how it turned out, and your heart's just going. I'm so accustomed to this person being in every facet of my life, and and they're in my being. You know, so it's an intense experience, and how how do you reconcile that? And I think a lot of people probably try to tell themselves that they're over something, but they're not, you know. Let's, let's 
as you said, you're artist is sensitive, and I think that's an integral part of your work. You have to be sensitive to yourself and what's going on to the world around you so that you can document these things oh. in songs. And as a singer as well, I mean, there's there's yeah, you know, that's such an art form to be able to draw on emotions to perform. And I guess I'm wondering how you protect yourself as 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 a, as an artist when sort of you know the waves of life are batting against your rocks so to speak um but you know you need to deliver a performance whether it's in the studio or live are there yeah. are there techniques you've developed to do that uh I, I think a lot of it just comes down to life experience. You know, I think it's much more difficult for a younger person. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you've been around the block a few times, you know, you do get that resilience. And, um, you know, a younger person has the physical strength, I think, to endure things better. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you're, as you're getting older, you've got the wisdom and you get a stronger mind. So I think I'm able to kind of employ that button or deploy that button when necessary. Yeah. Now you're working on an album, I understand. Um, so how's that coming along? Because I'm certainly looking forward to new music from you. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I w- it was shaping up to be an EP, um, but I'm I'm feeling like it's just time to just jump into the deep end and do an album. You know, these days most people release EPs, I find. Um, but, you know, I've got enough material to do an album and I'm hoping that's going to be out at the start of next year. Well, that's very, very exciting. Um, and so, Hunter, hopefully I may talk to you again around the time of the album, but for now the new song is Mind of Its Own and it's been mm-hmm. fantastic to talk to you. Oh, thank you so much for your time, Sophie. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.